Good morning, folks. Glad to have you with us here as we spend some time today in God's Word once more. And, uh, you know, as, as a child, I like most kids, I, I enjoyed watching cartoons and, and so forth. And one of my favorite cartoons was Fred Flintstone, was the Flintstones. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, as I grew older, I really appreciated Wilma's famous quote that she always said, and that was, a happy hubby is a chubby hubby. <laughs> but, you know, with... Uh, some, one, one of the things that, that frequently popped up with uh, in, the, in the Flintstones comics, the, the, uh, the cartoons, is, is they would have Fred there, and on one shoulder was a, a good angel, you know, and, and uh, it looked just like Fred, except he had the halo and wings and, and a white, you know, white gown and so forth, and he'd be, he'd be telling Fred the good things to do, and on the other shoulder there was another angel, you know, with a pitchfork and, and, so, and horns and so forth, but it was Fred's face, and, it, and he would be telling him, yeah, go ahead, Fred, you can do that, that's not a problem, and the other angel said, oh, no, no, don't do that, Fred, and, and you know, some people actually think that angels are some kind of a fictitious representation of a conscience like the Flintstones had there, you know? And, and other people think of, of angels as more, you know, it's a mindless choir with dressed in white robes and they, they do nothing but sing and, and, and play harps and, and walk around with smiles on their faces like they belong to some crazy cult, you know? And neither of these uh, visual representations that that, that people have of, of angels are correct, okay? They're not even, they're not even remotely close. And, and uh, we learned last week that uh, angels are created beings. And whether they were created sometime before the six days of creation of the earth, or whether they were created on the very first day of, of, of that creation week, those six 24-hour days of, of creation that God created, is, is up for some debate. But what is not up for debate is the fact that these are real, okay? They are real beings and they are created, they were created by God and they were created to praise God and to bring honor and, and glory to God just like mankind was created for, okay? The same purpose, although there is a, a vast difference between angels and humans. And we're gonna look at, at that a bit this, um, this morning as we look into God's word. And, and the first thing I'd like you to, to realize about angels is that they were intelligent individuals superior to man, all right? And, and they were, um, we, we, we see here that when, when, when Jesus, what we call the incarnation, when Jesus uh, took on the form of, of, a, of a human being, all right, and gave up you know, the, the power and the glory that he had and, and was reduced down to just, just a, a, an infant that was born in, 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 a, in a stable and, and put in a manger, all right? And, and we know this, there's a Christmas story. We're coming up on that time of the year. But we, the, what happened, like, how big of a step, maybe we can put it that way, was it for, for God to become man? Okay, and this is important as, as we look at this, I'd like you to take your Bibles and, and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Now we're going to look at a lot of verses this morning, so it's probably a good idea if you had a pen and a paper. Well, well I guess we're, we're doing this on video, you can always hit pause until you, until you find it and, and then and so forth. But I'm going to take you to a lot of different verses today, um, showing you different aspects of what angels are, okay, and, and what just, just what is an angel, okay? But if, we, if you're there in, in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse number 9, it's, it's the writer of Hebrews, who we believe is more than likely Paul, okay? And he says, <clears throat> excuse me, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. When Jesus became a human, when he became a man, took on the form of a man, it was a step below the angels, okay? It says that he was made a little lower than the angels, which means the angels are superior to mankind, all right? And they are, they are a higher form of God's creation. Again, we know that they are created by God, and they possess greater knowledge, 
okay, and greater intelligence than, than man does, okay? They are, they are not omniscient beings like God by, by any stretch of the imagination, but let's, let's take a look at, at a verse that, that Jesus refers to to see how high the intelligence and the knowledge that the angels have, okay? Go, go in your Bibles there to Matthew, okay? Matthew chapter 24, all right? And Jesus is speaking of the time when he's, when he's coming again here, okay? And this is Jesus talking. And he says, I'm talking about that time when, when, he, when his return is going to happen. And he says, but of that day, Matthew 24, verse number 36, okay? And it says, but of that day and hour, no knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You can see it's like a stepping stone there, you know? No man knows, you know, not even the angels know. None of the angels know. The only one that knows is God the Father when he is coming back, okay? And even when we look at, with, when we look at these angels, all right, and even the, the fallen angels, and, and, you know, Satan is a fallen angel, and the angels that, that it came with him there are frequently referred to as Satan and his angels, okay? We also call them demons. Sometimes they're called devils. Sometimes Satan is called the devil. We call the serpent, okay? And, and, and so forth, and they're just kind of um, different words to describe who this, this individual is. But we see that, that Satan himself, speaking of, of knowledge and intelligence, he knows the scriptures well, and the demons know the scriptures well. Remember when, when uh, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the three temptations? What did Satan do? Satan quoted the Bible. Now, he misquoted it, and he, and he took it out of context, which is... Just like the cults do when they come to your door and, and they're trying to tell you something, they'll pull a verse right out of their hat, you know, and, and they'll, they'll twist it around to say something, you know, that, that, that it does not say. And that's what Satan was doing. But he was quoting the scripture. They know the scriptures, all right? Satan knows of his fate, all right? It's in the scriptures and he knows about that. If you take a look in, in, in Revelation, rather, chapter 12, in verse 12, it talks about the prophet is, is these are prophecies concerning Satan's fate, and he knows about those things. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 12, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He knows he's got just a short time, okay? He knows what's going to happen to him, all right? It's, it's written in stone, all right, as, as far as when God told him what's going what, what's to happen. And it's, it's written in, in God's Word, and even the demons know, all right? In, in Matthew, if you're back there, you're going to have to flip back and forth. They're going to get you going through the New Testament from Revelation back to Matthew, back to Revelation, all over the place. And we're going to stop in the middle there. But in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 29, this is, this is one of the times when, when Jesus was confronting some demons head on that were possessing an individual, all right? And in Matthew, again, chapter 8, verse 29, he says, And behold, they cried out, this is the demons, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Before what time? Before the time that's, that's told of us in God's word that they are going to be tormented, all right? And so we, we see that they, they are in, intelligent, all right? Sadly, many of the demons in Satan know the Bible better than a lot of Christians do, and that's a sad thing. Now, they've had a long time, all right? And, and that also adds to their, to their, um, their abilities, and that's not the right word here, but... but how much, how much knowledge that they have because they, they don't have to learn history. They live through it, all right? And they've seen things and, and so forth as, as they, um, um, as far as being able to tempt people, they, 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 they've seen it over and over again, what works, what doesn't work, you know, with, with and, and, but for most people and so forth. And, and that's what makes them so deadly, okay? The experience that they've had and the knowledge that they have accrued over, over time. They are intelligent, okay? superior intelligence to humans, all right? We see not only are they intelligent, but angels, good angels and bad angels, and I'm not talking about the ones on Fred's shoulders here, I'm talking about the real ones, okay? And, but not only are they intelligent, but they have emotions, all right? 
They are personalities, okay? They're not just a thing, okay? They are cre they are creations by God. I was going to say creatures, but they're not really a creature, okay? But they are creations by God. They are beings, okay? Better word. They are beings created by God, and they have emotions. We see in, in James, okay? Chapter number two, my favorite book of the Bible. Book of James written by Jesus' half-brother, named James, okay? And James, it, it says in James chapter 2 and verse 19, he says, Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils believe also and tremble, okay? They, are, they I show the emotion here of being fearful and, and not to spend too much time with, with the demons, although there seems to be more interaction time that, that we see with them in, in a lot of different scriptures. So I will be using them a lot as, as we look at, at some of the characteristics of, of, of angels here. But in Luke chapter 15, okay, let's look at some good angels. Luke chapter 15 and verse 10, again, showing that angels not only are intelligent beings, but they have emotions as well. It says in, in Luke 15 and verse 10, it says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. They have joy. They have fear. They have different types of emotions. All right, Angels not only have intelligence, they not only have um, emotions similar to that of, of humans, Okay, but they also have a will, all right? They can make choices. And if, if you're in James, you just have to go back a, a few more pages to, to Jude. There's only one chapter. Another one of Jesus' half-brothers wrote this book, Jude, all right? But Jude chapter 1, only one chapter, verse number 6 says this, And the angels which kept not their first estate, this is talking about the fallen angels, all right, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. These angels made a choice, all right? They have a will to make a free choice. You know, God didn't create angels to be mindlessly serve Him, all right, any more than He created man to do the same, all right? He did, didn't, didn't create each of these, of, of these beings to mindlessly serve Him without a will, all right? Both were created to serve. Both were created to serve God. Both were created to praise God. Both were created to give honor to God. But neither angels nor mankind are forced to do so, okay? You'll get this question when you're, when you're talking with people and they find out you're a Christian and so forth and you know, they look at the news and they'll say, you know, why does God allow evil people to do evil things to innocent people? And it's a legitimate question and you will get this many times. You know what? It's for the same reason that he allows you to either to choose to serve him or to choose not to serve him. It's for the same reason that he has allowed you or and me to sin this very week and not zapped us with a bolt of lightning. You know, the, you know, the moment we had a, a, an impure thought or a thought of vengeance or a thought of, you know, greed or lust or whatever else may have, may have even just passed your mind, you know, or something else that you did physically or were going to do or so forth. And, and that's sin against God. And He has allowed that to happen without coming down on you with like Ecclesiastes 8.11. It says, because sentence against an, e a, a, an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. And, and, because, and what that's saying is because God does just doesn't punch us right at the, you know, when we deserve it and right away when we do sin, okay, and something happened to stop that, People think they get away with it, all right? But God allows people to do those things because He gives us a choice, all right? He, and, and, and He get the same with these, these demons, okay? And these angels, when they were created, they were given the choice, okay? You have a free will to make the choice to either to love God or put Him at another priority other than first, and that's not loving God. 
If he's second or third, that's not loving God. That's putting something else ahead of him. And God says, thou shalt have put nothing ahead of him. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Nothing, okay? But, but it's a choice. It's a choice that we have the same as the angels had a choice, all right? They had a free will. And, and it, it seems apparently that they, they had this choice. And, and, you know, many of them, and, and some believe that one verse in, in Revelation indicates that it was about a third. That's possible. We know there's lots, okay? All right? And, and, uh, but however many there, there are chose to go against God, okay? And it's such a foolish thing. They, they, they didn't get away with it, all right? But, you know, angels, as we've seen, are intelligent, okay? They have emotions similar to that of, of, of us. They have a free will similar to that of like we do, okay? But they also have different personalities, all right? I'd like you to take your Bibles and we're going to look at Mark, all right? Mark chapter 1. And as we look at Mark chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 23. There's, here's, there's two instances where, again, we're looking at, at, at bad angels, but I, I want you to see here how, how they react to Jesus, all right, as, as Jesus confronts them. And, and in Mark chapter 1, starting in verse number 23, and it says, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone that what... What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Okay? And we, and we see here that this, this, uh, this evil spirit, this fallen angel, we, we can see how he came here and, and it, he had a, an indifferent attitude towards Christ, all right? It's, it's almost like he, he, he's, um, he, it's almost, almost like he's talking back to him, okay? Um, it, you know, it, when, he, when he's there, look at he says, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, thou art the Holy One of God. And, he, and then Jesus says, hold your peace, like stop talking. And he, he came out of the man because he was commanded to by God. And this is interesting. We'll get to it when we look at the second one here. But he came out and he, he, uh, he threw the guy on the ground and, and he cried out with a loud voice. And then he, was, and then he, he left. Okay. We see his, uh, this, this attitude. All right. I want you to take a look still in, in the book of Mark there. And just go over a couple of pages to Mark chapter 5. Okay. Mark chapter number 5. And we're going to see a difference here. All right. Mark chapter 5, starting in verse number 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, this is the maniac of Gadara, okay? And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him that he would not send him away out of the country. All right? And, and, and we, we see here, when we move down, down to verse number 12, and it says, And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. We see that there's a difference here. There's, it, it's, it's similar in, in, in what they're saying, but there's, there's not the... The indifferent attitude, it's more of a fearful attitude that, that these, these demons, these angels have towards, God, towards Jesus. The same confrontation here when Jesus says, you got to get out of there. And, and, and the one is, is, you know, what am I to do? You know, leave me alone type of thing. And, and Jesus says, oh, hold your peace. Like, you can't talk to me that way. Okay. And, and the other ones are, you know, you know please let us, let us do this other thing instead. Okay. And, and, and they, they are cast out. They're two different attitudes when they're confront, confronted by Christ. But you know what the really cool thing is? They both have to obey him because he's God. And they both come out. The one kind of comes out with in a, in a bit of a snit and takes the guy and throws him on the ground and makes and screams with a loud voice and comes out, okay? But he still he st still obeys 
Yeah, sort of obeys, okay? He's not doing it with the right attitude. And we, we tell our kids, you know, the obeying is, is doing it right away with the right attitude. Well, he didn't do that. He came out, but he didn't come out with the right attitude. And, and he didn't come out right away either. But, but he, did, he, did, he had to release him, okay, and, and come out of him when he was commanded by Jesus. So it, it's interesting there. They, they knew who he was, okay? They knew who he was. These, these demons knew. They recognized who Jesus is, all right? And, uh, but, but at any rate, we see that, they, that there's, there's, there's different personalities here and, and different attitudes that, that they would have because they're individuals. Angels are individuals, okay? What kind of, what kind of bodies do angels have? What do they have? Are, are they, you know, do, do, they, do they all look alike? Are they all, you know, what do, what do they look like? All right. Let's look at some good angels first. All right. We look at some good ones. We look at some bad ones. Let's look at some good ones here. I want you to go into Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse number 13 and 14 we're going to look. And it says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand that I may make thine enemies thy footstools. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Okay, now this is going on a little bit about what their purpose is, but we see what they are. They are ministering spirits, okay? Angels are spirits, okay? Let's look at in an evil one here. We go back to Luke, okay? Luke chapter 8 and verse number 2, all right? Give you a second to find that or jot it down. Luke chapter 8 and verse 2, and it's talking about uh, Mary Magdalene, but, but anyway, it says, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, okay, or seven spirits. The good ones are spirits. The bad ones are spirits. They're all spirits. Let's, oh, how about Satan? We know he's an angel, or he was an angel, okay? In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, okay? Get your sword drill working here. I told you I'm going to show you lots of verses this morning, okay? But Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 says, Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who's the prince of the power of the air? That's Satan, okay? The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, okay? Satan is a spirit, okay? He is a spirit. All the rest of his, e of his evil angels are spirits. All the good angels are ministering spirits, okay? They are spirit. And, and although God is a spirit, remember what, what Jesus says in John chapter 4 and verse 24? He says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? So God is a spirit, but, but God is omnipotent, all right? Or om, uh, and he's omnipresent, okay? He is everywhere, but angels, although they are spirits, are not, okay? They are not omnipotent, but they're not, they can't be everywhere at once. They are, they are restricted, okay, to, to where they are. And, and although you could take, like that maniac of Gadara there where they went out there and they went into the swine and there was 2,000 swine that ran off this cliff. They, you can jam 2,000 of these spirits into one man. He says, we, we, my name is Legion for we are many, okay? And, and some look at this and they say, well, a, a legion of soldiers was 1,000, so there's at least 1,000 of, of demons in here, and, and maybe there was, okay? And, but all, and all, all of the swine did not necessarily all have to have a demon in them for them to run off the cliff, okay? If there's 2,000 of them there and 1,500 of them got demons in them and they're running off the cliff, those other 500 are going to follow them or they're going to get caught in the middle and go. But the, the point is this. There was a lot of demons that were in this man. He says, my name is Legion for we are many. Okay, and, and, and the, the, the thing I, I want to, to impress upon you here, okay, is they, they, they were in that body and they, they, were, they didn't want to be banished down into hell, okay, and they didn't want to be banished somewhere else that, 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 and they have to obey God. They had to obey Jesus. And he said, let us, let us, let us go into the, these swine. And Jesus says, all right, so you can see where... They, they, have, they have some freedom to, to do what they're going to do. They, they went into this man to begin with. But you know what? They still have to. There's, there's confines that God sets around them. We see that with, 
when Satan wanted to tempt Job and wanted to try Job, God only allowed him to go so far. So although they, you know, although they they have some freedom to to do some evil things, there's 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 limits as to what God allows them to do. But along with those limits, there is limits of where they how where what they can be in. Okay, and they can't be two places at once. God can be everywhere. He is a spirit, but these spirits are in one spot at one time. All right. And, uh, but thinking of that, there was years and years ago, back in the seventies, it might even have been in the sixties. There was a, a program on, on TV. It was a, it was a comedy thing, a whole bunch of different comedy skits that went on and, and so forth. And there was a guy in there and his name was Flip Wilson. And maybe some people might remember who Flip Wilson is. You, you got to be older to know who Flip Wilson is. But he coined a phrase that was very, very popular for years and years and years. And that phrase was, the devil made me do it. You know, and people would say that when, then, when they did something that was wrong. Say, oh, well, the devil made me do it. But I want you to think of something here, okay? The devil is just like those other demons. He is he's more powerful than they were are okay he's kind of like he is their leader but he is a spirit being that can only be in one place at one time all right it says that you know when he roamed to and fro and he can move around and so forth and god calls him it says there in hebrews that he's the prince and the power of the air but he can only be in one place at one time so what are the odds that satan has ever had anything to do with you personally. One of his demons? Oh yeah. But Satan himself? Probably not. Because he can only be in one place at one time. And with what are we, 7 billion people on the planet? He can't be after all of them all at the same time. But you know what? He's got a lot of demons there. Okay. And that brings me to my next question here. How many angels are there? How many good angels? How many bad angels are there? All right. We take a look again in, in another verse here and back in Revelation. There's lots of verses in Revelation that speak of angels, all right? Good ones and bad ones, all right? But in Revelation chapter 5, Revelation 5, verse number 11, it says, And behold, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. You know what it's saying? There was a ton of them, okay? Say, well, there's spirits. They don't weigh anything, Brother Taylor. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm looking at another verse, all right? Hebrews chapter 12 in verse number 22. It's not too far away. Hebrews, Hebrews James, 1 Second Peter, 1 Second, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. You're not too far away. So Hebrews 12, 22. It says, but ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. There's so many, we can't count them all, okay? The answer is to this question, there is a lot. But I want you to know something else about this, how many there is. However many God created whenever he created them, the number is still the same. There's no more. There's no less. They cannot die. We looked at that last week. Okay. And you know what else? They cannot. There is no such thing as a baby angel. All right. And, and, they're, they're, and it, Jesus explains this when he's, when he's, he's rebuking some, some other people and, and what, the, what they're saying. Okay. And, and because they didn't know what the scripture was, was saying, they were taking it out, of, twisting it out of context. Okay. But in Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 30, and he's talking about um, what it's going to be like when Christians do get resurrected. And he was talking to the Sadducees and so forth that don't believe in the resurrection. And they were trying to, trying to, trying to trick Jesus. And, he, and, and good luck with that. <laughs> okay. The only one that's going to look like a fool is trying to trick Jesus is the try, guy who's trying to trick Jesus. And he says to them in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 30, he says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Not marrying, they're not, there's, there's no such thing as a husband and wife in, in heaven. Okay? 
and I know a lot of people say, well, won't I recognize who my wife is? And, and I, I, I think we will recognize who they are, but that, that relationship, now, now I'm talking off my hat here, okay? I don't have anything to back this up other than they're not going to be married in heaven, okay? But will they recognize who they were? But it won't be the same, okay? The, just the, the relationship won't be there as, as the same. And how that works, I don't know, <laughs> okay? You come and tell me, all right, how that works. But what, what Jesus says is, you know what? It won't matter because he was talking about they were they'd brought up this fictional um, situation of you know one man marries his wife and you know and he dies so his brother married her and then he dies and seven of them married her and, and, and no and, and anyway finally she which one is she going to be married to when they get to heaven and Jesus says neither none of them okay all right but they're going to be like the angels of God who aren't married who don't have children who none of that stuff happens okay so whatever happened before. Whatever, whatever number was that God created of the angels, it's the same number today, okay? Now, there isn't a lot um, written in the Bible. Uh, there is some, but there's not a lot written concerning the fall of the angels or what state they were in or what they were doing beforehand. And a lot of that stuff we're just going to find out later, okay? But we do know that, that Satan... We know what happened to Satan, and we know that some of his, his demon angels are free to roam the earth, okay, but within the boundaries that God set for them. And, and some of the angels that, that fell with Satan are not, okay. In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, some of those angels that fell with, with Satan, they must have done something else, okay. And, and, but... They're not free to roam the earth. None of them ever possessed one of those people on, in, the, in the Bible, okay? Because it tells us in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Some are and have been ever since they fell, whenever that was, have been reserved in judgment in hell, okay? And we're going we're gonna to look at, at this um, in some detail, what, what limited details we do have in the Bible, and we're going to pick up on, on what, what information that we can glean there at, at a future date, okay? But the ones that stayed true to God, the angels that stayed true to God, uh, it, it's interesting when Jesus refers to them, and, and there's, there's four verses that are very, very similar. I want to I look at one of them, okay? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 25 in verse number 31 okay Matthew 25 verse 31 and it's Jesus talking and he's talking about when he's gonna when he's coming back all right and he says and when the Son of Man shall come in all his glory I'm sorry let me, let me rephrase that because I didn't read it right when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory he calls them the holy angels angels all right and in mark chapter 8 verse 38 in luke chapter 9 verse 26 and in revelation 14 verse 10 he always refers to them as the holy angels okay they're also called something different in first timothy chapter 5 in verse 21 okay referring to the angels that did not fall with satan all right in 1 Timothy 5, 21, he says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels, all right, that thou observe these things by, without preferring one before another, doing nothing of partiality. But what he's, he's calling them here, he calls them, in those other four verses, he calls them the holy angels. And in here, he calls them the elect angels, all right? And it, it's, it's hard for us to really understand what, what there is in it. I know some people think, and, and there's, it's just so limited uh, uh, information that we have. It's it's hard to come down with a with a hard and fast rule. But it it seems that when when those those angels made the choice to um, to to rebel against God, that they were all thrown out. And it, and it seems like the other angels, none of that's happened again since. At least there's not, nothing alluded to that in Scripture. And it's like when it calls them the elect angels, and it, that they're they have um, it, it's like they've been they've been changed in in some way I, I i i don't there's not enough there to really put that but i'm just going to tell you what i think and that's all it is it's just what i think okay it, it it's when we go back when i die 
and God takes me and I get a glorified body and I'm, I'm changed, my sin nature is gone then because I, I will have been changed and to be in the image of Jesus Christ. And, and I'm thinking that something may have happened and, and these angels, at that point there was a decision that was made and then they, they were changed and now they are called the holy angels. They are called the elect angels and they are, they are like what we will be and that we will not have, they won't, we won't have the, the, the uh, um, we can't sin, okay? Once we, once we are changed, okay, and we are made holy like God, all right, there won't be any sin in heaven, all right? And I think that these, something happened with these angels too. I, I, again, that's me just talking off my hat, but they're, re, they're referred to as the holy angels and as the elect angels, okay? So if you can see some more about, about that and, and you can come and tell me about it, I'd, I'd appreciate that. But that's, that's, that's what they're called here. That's what Jesus called them, okay? But what I do want us to understand here, all right, is that even though the angels are a higher form of God's creation, they're more powerful, they're more intelligent, God didn't die for them. God did not die for them. And after we receive our glorified bodies, after we, we go and, 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 and we are, we're, you know, it says, and then we will all should be changed, okay? And, and after we received our glorified bodies, okay, glorified Christians will judge angels, all right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 3, it's Paul talking, and he says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? He's, so if, if glorified Christians will be judging angels, it's... It, 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 I'm not sure about this, okay? But it almost, like, the angels are, are, are higher um, creation than man is. But maybe that changes once we get our glorified bodies because the glorified Christians, the ones that Jesus died for, okay? He didn't die for the angels. Those angels sin, they're kicked out. They have no chance of, of coming back to heaven, all right? And they had no chance once they made that choice. They were out. All right, but man has that choice to choose what, what that that um, that gift that, that God gave, but He didn't give that to the angels. He gave that to us, even though we are an inferior creation that He made to the angels. So, do we once we are glorified, are we above the angels? Then I, you know, I'm not sure. Okay, but here here's something to remember. Okay, angels were created. To glorify God. Some chose to, some chose not to. Man was created to glorify God. Some choose to, some choose not to. Which are you? Which are you? The same fate awaits both. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, he says, then shall he say to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. He didn't create them. He just conned them into coming with them when, when they fell. And we'll look at that at, at another date. But you know what? We have something the angels don't have. Ag as great of beings as they are, as great of creations that, that God has made them, and they're eternal, you know, and, and, and they have great knowledge, they have great power, but what they don't have is Jesus didn't die for them, okay? But he died for us. You gotta wonder why, because we certainly don't deserve it any more than they do, the angels. All right, but we can serve an awesome God because He loves us and we don't deserve it. But which are you? Which, cho which choice do you make? Choose for God or choose against God? It's up to you. God gives you the choice. Have a great day.